Today we're doing a little throwback video to find out is first gen Ryzen still worth it? We have the Ryzen 7 1700X, an 8 core 16 threaded processor that came out a while ago, but is it still worth picking up on the used market for a good price? We're about to find out, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of using boring and plain looking keyboards? Or maybe you committed the cardinal sin of using a membrane keyboard? Well, today's video is brought to you by Dust Silver and their purple pink D84 mechanical keyboard. The Dust Silver D84 has vibrant BBT keycap that are wear resistant and it also comes with swappable side rails to fully maximize the aesthetics of the board. When paired with the 16.8 million color RGB, you're left with a keyboard that stands out while creating a comfortable ambiance. Now for the more mechanical details, this keyboard is a 75% mechanical keyboard with three mode connectivity. Bluetooth, 2.4G wireless, and Type-C wired. This keyboard has six different options for switches, but it's also hot swappable in case you want to swap them out and put something else in yourself. It even comes with sound dampening foam inside the case to help improve the acoustics, and it features a lightning fast 1000 Hz pulling rate. If you're interested in learning more or in buying the Dust Silver Purple Pink D84 today, check out the links in the description down below. Big thanks to Dust Silver for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. He's trying to open it, he's trying. When AMD first came out with uh, First Gen Ryzen, we actually got the OG reviewer box. I actually have it right there. I literally cut the front of it out and we've had it on display ever since, but this is an eight core 16 thread 1700X. This was actually Matt's first Ryzen CPU. I had the 1800X, but it's an awesome eight core 16 thread. We rocked these for years. I mean, we had these for a really long time, even with multiple GPU upgrades, they did really good. So I'm excited to see if it actually is still decent in games. And we managed to snag this on eBay for about $70, which seems to be a pretty average price. Now these CPUs were a little too beefy for stock coolers, so we have a slight upgrade here. This is an ID cooling frozen A410 in black. This is a super sleek looking 120 mil cooler that we really love to use. We have an Asus Prime B450MA2. So this is basically a refresh, that's what the two means, of a B450 that is a new board. You can buy these on Amazon, they're usually about $79. You have Ryzen 3000 ready, you have Ryzen 5000 ready, and on the back, you know, it says it supports uh, first, second, third gen, as well as some Vega graphics. Now for RAM, we we have 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4. This is a two by four kit, very basic stuff. And you know, honestly, it's funny to think back when DDR4 came out. Now we're in the new DDR5 revolution where it's pretty expensive, but this stuff was once DDR5 price and you were lucky to get anything past like 2400 megahertz when first and Ryzen came out. And for storage, we have the 512 gig Clev Kraus C710. This is a 512 gig NVMe SSD. These Ryzen CPUs are compatible with it. I wouldn't recommend getting a gen four because you're not gonna utilize the speed, but an NVMe is really good for this. Now for the graphics card. This is one of our favorite deals on the used market right now. This is an EVGA GTX 1660 Super. You can find these things for about 100 to 120 bucks. Let me see what we paid for ours. We paid about $120. There you go. On the top end for a EVGA model, which RIP EVGA, but this is one of the better built cards that you can get in the 1660 Super range. And I think it'll pair very nicely with 1800X. Has an NVIDIA encoder for live streaming, 60 gigs of VRAM for your esports titles on higher details. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how it performs. Now for the power supply, we have the Zalman Giga Max 500 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. 500 watts, plenty for this PC build. The 1700X didn't pull a ton of power on first launch, so 500 watts will be plenty for this pairing. But if you did go with a, well, higher end CPU and GPU combo, you would want to go a little bit higher on the wattage, but 500 watts for this build, I'm gonna guess, let me see, under full load, we're gonna get about 250 watts, maybe? 250, 250, if that, maybe a little bit less. We'll test that during the benchmarks. And of course, for our favorite budget case, this right here is the Antec NX200M. It's a very basic case, comes with one fan in the back. It's an all black design, I believe with the all black version. Um, all black design, and it's gonna be a micro ATX case, so it's gonna work really well with our micro ATX motherboard. And all in all, for $500, you get eight cores and 16 threads. You get a very capable GPU, but just how good is the Ryzen 7 1700X in 2024? And should you opt for it versus something like a newer Gen i3 or some other 3000 series Lester Ryzen 5 CPU? Well, we're gonna benchmark it and find out.
All right, guys, we are playing Apex Legends now, and we are at 1920 by 1080p, max FOV, and we're basically running a nice little medium preset, essentially, and we got NVIDIA Reflex on an Abled Plus Boost, which will help us get a little bit more FPS. And uh, I didn't unlock the frame cap. This game, if you didn't know, automatically caps you at 144 FPS, but you can unlock up to 300 with the special command. I didn't really feel it necessary, honestly. Oh, God, this guy was masters. Here we go. Off to a good start. All right, this is already looking great. I mean, at, at medium with some high, just a couple of low settings in AP, we're pretty much getting very close to our cap with really good latencies. Like these, this is very respectable. And oh no, I just realized I'm playing Loba. This is the, the worst character you can play in these modes, I swear. Yeah, so far though, guys, looking pretty good. I mean, I'm really happy hitting a cap in a game. Oh, he took my kill. Ha <laughs> ha. You gotta be kidding me, man. Oh, no, I'm my punch mound, man. I don't have my punch mound, dude. God, the hashtag shredded. Hashtag shredded. Oh, oh God. Oh my God, I'm going crazy here. Holy crap. Oh, it's so bad, dude. Yup. Oh, I can't believe that did that much damage. That was that was a lucky one right there. No! Yeah. <laughs> All right, Apex Legends, AAA title at actually like respectable, like medium to high on some of the settings in ADP, no real upscaling or anything. 144 FPS quite a bit of the time, so looking really good on that. Now for an even more demanding AAA title, Halo Infinite. All right, guys, we are playing some Fortnite, and I'm gonna do a little late drop here. We are doing some ranked solos, very risky move. We got 1080p DX11, and we are currently we're, oh, here we go. And we are currently on a medium quality preset with TSR medium, just recommended settings, essentially. Um, I wanted to try out something a little different than like performance like we usually do. And this is my first run. So keep in mind, we might see some lag spikes the first maybe five minutes of gameplay. Um, especially with like when you have a build that's not super high end, the game has to load a lot of textures in, but typically once you've been playing for about, I'd say three to five minutes, Weirdly enough, it stops lagging, so just bear with me if you see any lag spikes or anything. But, um, you know, hey, we very well may have to requeue anyways, so we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. We're playing ranked, guys, so this, this could get real sweaty real quick. Oh, shoot! Bot activities. <laughs> wow, I am not ready for this push, clearly. That guy's got had a lot of ammo, I felt like. All right, guys, take two. We did tweak the settings a little bit. So we're still full screen 1080p, max FPS 165, and we are on a custom quality TSR, uh, which does some 3D resolution downscaling, epic view distance, and then basically low, everything else I could do is, uh, you know, gamer mode. So hopefully this time we'll see if the FPS is a little better, but you could go performance mode, of course, rather than being on DX11 or DX12. Um, try performance mode, you know, if you wanna see if you could probably get some pretty constant high FPS. Uh, just honestly with the 1660 Super alone, I would say the 1700X is definitely still a good little candidate for performance mode in eSports title. Wow, that person's a gamer, dude, Jesus Christ. All right guys, one more time, performance settings. We got 1080p, low, and then epic render distance. Let's see how she does this time for our final little test. I think this time, we should go to, we'll go Reckless Railways again. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it's not as bad as last time. But now we're getting a little bit closer to our FPS cap at times. Our latencies are looking a little better. The drop is always the roughest part because you're rendering and everything. But this is already looking a lot smoother. Hopefully a little less stutters than we were getting 
I'm a, I'm a little short here, maybe. Yeah, I'm trust. I'm trusting it. Oh yeah. I think we're we're just gonna make it to that, to that first house, hopefully. Uh, I thought this would work better than it did. Why does he have full armor? Why am I stuck? The C Sports title is not really utilizing our hardware to its fullest potential. I'm hella. Yeah, I had no HP. As soon as I saw that person, I'm just like, I'm dead. I was about to say I'm hella low on, on health. But that was Fortnite, guys. Um, so performance mode or even like medium settings, 1080p, this thing actually did pretty well. A couple of stutters here and there while stuff was rendering in, but I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go ahead and test out another game. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking the first gen Ryzen gaming PC. So we're about $500 in and we were able to play AAA titles at medium settings. And of course, eSports titles, you can play at pretty high settings and still get a pretty respectable like 100 plus FPS most of the time. In terms of our 3D Time Spy score, we got 6,027, which gave an eight cent per point score, which honestly, pretty good for an experimental video. We normally would not tell people to go to your way to buy first gen Ryzen because let's face it, we're up to 8,000 series now, but you still do get DDR4 support. The motherboards that support the first and Ryzen CPUs are still fairly upgradable in terms of future-proofing CPUs. So if you happen to just have one lying around or maybe you find a really good deal on one, we do still recommend them for 2024. Let us know in the comment section down below if you're still rocking first or second gen Ryzen at home. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you all in the next one. This PC right here will be for sale at PCBros.tech, and as you can see, guys, it's been fully benchmarked. We temp checked it. It's got a fresh Windows install. It is good to go with a new and improved one-year warranty. So make sure you check out PCBros.tech today and use code TOASTYBROS2 on checkout to save 2%. See y'all later.